Hello everybody, this is Tim here again. Anybody wondering why I look so wore out? It's really early in the morning. And I just watched like three movies in a row. And I'm ready to just jump into this review. This being my 100th review. Finishing this sucker off and calling it a, a night and going to sleep. Well, actually, I mean, sleep in the morning, so pretty much night's over, but whatever. <laughs> Not to get technical about it. But, uh, just jump into these three reviews. I got um, Terra Vision, Video Dad, and Predestination with Ethan Hawke. Just jump in, Predestination with Ethan Hawke, four star movie out of four. It's my first time watching it. I really enjoyed this film. I believe it's directed by the same guys who directed Daybreakers, which is a movie I haven't seen in a long time, but this is definitely their best film. Um, this film is it is a cool time travel movie. I believe it came out around the same time as Looper, and definitely reminds me of Looper. I, ha I wouldn't know which one I like better, this or Looper. Uh, <clears throat> I definitely really like the drama in this movie. I would say the drama in this movie is actually better than the time travel. Uh, as far as performances go, Sarah Snook, I believe that's the actress's name. She does the best performance in the whole movie. Ethan Ethan Hawke's performance in the movie is good, but she definitely steals the show. She is great in this movie. She's definitely an actor I will look forward to seeing in other stuff. Pretty much, you, uh, you got like this, you got like this dude who comes into a bar, and you find out that he used to be a woman. And the whole like first half of the movie is uh, like this person telling their life story to Ethan Hawke. And uh, Sarah Snook does such a good job playing the character of Jane, and you really feel sorry for the character, and you see her life and how depressing it was and everything, and how she wound up uh, pregnant from like a, a really almost, seemed like a one-night stand. I don't think it was, though, but she, she like met some guy, got pregnant from him, and then he like disappeared. Um, and, and you see how like super smart the character is and everything, because she's like good at like almost everything imaginable, <laughs> but uh, and then she she has a kid, and you find she finds out she's like a hermaphrodite, so something's happened in like her birth delivery, and uh, because she has like two sex organs, the female sex organs or something like that have been destroyed, and the doctor has to change her into a man, which I'm not sure if they would have to actually do that in real life. I don't think they would. Uh, I'm pretty sure they could just like give her hormone pills and keep her as a as a woman, just like take out the male sex organs. She just wouldn't be able to have kids anymore because her ovaries or whatever are destroyed. But they could give her like hormone pills and just keep her as a woman. I'm pretty sure you could just do that in real life, but it's a movie, so I'm willing to let that one slide. But uh, <clears throat> but anyway, so then she has to become a man, and so like this all this drama and stuff is like really interesting to me. And, and she like becomes a writer once she becomes a man and I found that was interesting as well but uh like I said I enjoy the first half of the movie like the life story of the character of Jane uh, played by Sarah Snook I, 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 I enjoy that the best of the movie to be honest and then the movie like switches gears into a time travel story with Ethan Hawke where he like takes her back in time and you find out that the man she slept with is actually herself so it's like whoa baby mind bended <laughs> uh, but uh, you pretty much kind of see it coming, though. A lot of, That's one of the weak spots of the movie. A lot of the twists you see coming, but because the acting is so well done, you're like, who gives a crap? I mean, honestly. But uh, hmm. but that's one weak spot of the movie. And so pretty, also, I'll cross, in the movie, uh, Ethan Hawke is like a time travel agent. He's searching for this guy called the Fizzle Bomber or something like that. And, of course, you find out that not only did... Uh, uh, he have sex. Uh, I mean that. Uh, not only did Jane, who now is John, have sex with herself when she was younger, or go back in time and have sex with her with her younger self. Not only that, but the baby they produced is themselves. Ethan Hawke basically takes the baby, takes it further back in time, and uh, you find out that that's actually the baby. That's like a big loop. That the baby is Jane, which turns into John, which has sex with Jane, which goes back to baby Jane, <laughs> pretty much, which I don't think if you have sex with yourself, you can produce like a, a copy of yourself, which I don't, I guess it's not a copy, I guess it's like the original, somehow some kind of loop like that, I'm not sure how that would work, uh, a loop like this would have to be uh, created in some way, shape or form, I, I think, by an outside party, 
But we'll not get into that. All the time travel stuff, you think about it too much, you just make your brain hurt. There's always flaws in time travel, so you got to be willing to let shit go. And then ultimately you find out that not only is the, not only is all this other stuff happened, but also Ethan Hawke is the, is the John character as well, except further in the future. Uh, John pretty much gets his face burnt and ends up looking like Ethan Hawke. And then you find out that Ethan Hawke is the fizzle bomber as well. And pretty much ends up shooting his stuff at the end. I won't go too much more. Uh, I just well, I just spoiled the ending, so. <laughs> but I won't. I won't jump into the movie any more than that. There's not really any need to. I've pretty much covered the main main basic points. Um, he's his own mother and father. He's his own child, and he he also kills himself at the end because he's been hunting for the fizzle bomber Ethan Hawk has, and then he finds out it's himself from the further future. So then he shoots his own stuff down. I get pretty much disgusted that that's what he turns out to be. The movie kind of ends on a question mark of whether or not you know he'll turn into the, whether or not he'll turn into the fizzle bomber, but it highly hints that he will. But it leaves it pretty much open for speculation about at least how he turns into the fizzle bomber or or why really. Um, it drops hints at why he may turn into the fizzle bomber, like maybe he wants more of a purpose in life because his past has been so mapped out. Uh, and it's pretty much a loop, you know. Maybe he wants to uh, do something that have meaning, so that's why he becomes the fizzle bomber. So I don't know that you could go with that, but uh, it kind of leaves it up to your own personal interpretation for you to make up yourself or come up with the idea of why he turns into a uh, bombing psychopath yourself. <laughs> but anyway, great movie, four stars, highly recommend it. Definitely something I'd like to buy. Uh, all right, jump into Tower Vision. I would give it three and a half stars. Tower Vision is a movie I had a lot of fun with. It's uh, got Charles Band's name all over it. I believe the director, though, is, I forgot the director's name, but I think he's the guy that directed uh, the movie Bad Channels uh, for Full Moon, which I haven't seen in forever. But uh, Charles Band like produced this movie and did the music, I believe. And Charles Band, I like Charles Band's like older Full Moon stuff. Like the first, the first five Puppet Masters are the only ones really worth watching. After that, the series turns to utter crap, and Full Moon has been crap for a long time. Um, I don't mind classic Full Moon, like old subspecies movies and stuff like that, but their newer stuff has all been crap. Anything from like pretty much the, the mid-90s to, to now has all been garbage. But um, <clears throat> just to jump into this film, though, this is not actually a Full Moon film, but it was produced by Charles Band, I believe, and he did the music. And uh, as far as Tire Vision goes, I think it's a lot of fun, actually. And I'd love to get this on Blu-ray. On Blu-ray, it comes as like a double feature of the movie Video Dead. Uh, but anyway, just jump into Tire Vision. Pretty much an alien creature gets caught into like the, the satellite like hookup network of this uh, suburban family. And uh, it keeps coming out of the TV and eating everybody. But the movie's pretty much a comedy. It's not anything to be taken seriously. The whole family is like a big bunch of wacky characters. you got like the military-obsessed grandpa and the military obsessed uh the child or whatever son and then you got like this punk girl i believe the actress's name is diane franklin i could be wrong or diana franklin um and then she's got like a, a punk boyfriend named od which i thought was hilarious and her dad i mean the, the kids dad in the movie is played by garrett graham who played the douchebag on uh child's play 2 i like him a lot better here because he had me laughing my ass off because him and his wife are like swingers in the movie and they're <laughs> One thing I find funny is the people they're swinging with, like Garrett Graham finds out that the, the, that the guy that they're going to swing with actually wants to have sex with him instead of his wife, and Garrett Graham is like, I'm going to have to give this guy a talk about the birds and the bees. I thought that was hilarious. Pretty much the monster kills everybody in the movie, and uh, I, I actually thought that was a funny ending. The monster kills everybody in the movie, including like this TV talk show host, and at the end of the movie, it, uh, it tries to get like a... Uh, the, the limousine driver or the driver or whatever that takes the TV talk show host around everywhere to take it to a TV station. That's pretty much where the movie ends. And uh, I thought that was a hilarious ending. The TV talk show host or whatever his name is like Medusa, um, which is, I guess, a parody of Elvira, which I, I, I thought was pretty funny. She definitely has a massive rack, which is nice. But, um, one thing I didn't like, though, is at the end of the movie, you see the monster, like, eat the kid or get ready to eat the kid, and then the camera cuts away, so you pretty much know it ate the kid. But the Medusa character and, like, the, the daughter in the movie, 
are still alive, and you don't actually see it kill them, and it just kind of skips to the next scene with uh, the creature having ate Medusa, having like, the creature can like, every time it eats somebody, it can like take on their form, and uh, <clears throat> make itself look like them, and so pretty much uh, after you, after it eats the kid, it looks like Medusa in the back of the vehicle is trying to get its driver to take them to uh, the uh, TV station. So I would have liked to have seen the creature actually eat, eat eat the character of Medusa and the daughter in the movie. I would have liked to have seen that. That's the only thing that keeps the movie from being four stars to me. Oh, and that and the fact I would like a little bit more gore in the movie. Most of the gore in the movie is like really gooey type stuff. It just makes the film feel a little bit too tame for me. This is actually a movie that uh, I would like to see a remake of because I find this film highly entertaining, but not a lot of people seem to know about it. And the people that do know about it really like the movie. But this is a film I could see really working in a remake, and it wouldn't require a very high budget, and I think it could be really hilarious if pulled off right. Because the family in the movie is really funny, and uh, you could take the stereotypes of today, maybe have the daughter even be like a, a jokey emo kid or something. I mean like a parody of an emo kid or something. Uh, <laughs> I mean you could do, you could update it like that and have the characters more today and have fun with it. Um, the monster is not particularly scary, though. It probably would be to, like, little kids, but it's not scary to adults at all. But it's not really meant to be, I don't think. You're kind of meant to just have fun with the movie. The movie's not meant to be scary at all. This is a B-movie done right. Charles Mann should really look back at this movie and try to see if he can imitate the style of this sucker. Also, I love the song in this movie by the band Fibonix or something like that, or Fibonix. not sure how you say their name. Uh, but they do a great song in this movie. Uh, when you watch the movie, you'll know. Chances are, if you're seeing this, if you're watching this video, you probably have seen uh, the movie, so you probably have heard the song. This movie's really, this movie's great. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, just like you're just, well, you first of all, you're watching a movie with a punk character in it named O.D. So right, that right there off the bat lets you know this movie is going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, I'd give I'd give Terror Vision three and a half stars. Uh, yeah, I just had a lot of fun with all the characters. Pretty much they get picked off one by one, which I was really surprised that all the family ended up dying at the end. Yeah, big spoiler. But uh, the characters were so much fun that I just laughed out loud when they were on screen. <laughs> Especially the swinging parents. They really made the movie for me. They had me laughing my ass off. Uh, but then to jump into Video Dad. Video Dad's not as good as Terror Vision. It's not as entertaining, and it's not as well made. It takes itself super seriously, first of all, is its problem with such a silly idea of zombies coming out of a TV set. Also, there's like an evil woman that like comes out of the TV set naked, which she's got a nice body, but at the same time, I'm like, what the hell does this character have to do with the zombies in the movie? It's never explained. But uh, also, there's like this Texas Ranger, I mean, Texas type guy in the movie who's like trying to help the family defeat the evil TV set. Pretty much it's a cursed TV set. It's dropped off at this house, uh, and if it, if it comes if it comes on, um, <clears throat> zombies start coming out of it, and they start eating anybody around the neighborhood pretty much. Um, which the zombie movies are always entertaining to me, but one weakness of the movie is that in order to stop the zombies, you gotta like lock them in a room they can't get out of, and they'll eat themselves. And I'm like, okay. Or you gotta convince the zombies that they're still alive, and you can kill them in like regular human methods because they think they're dying or something like that but that doesn't actually work because it wears off <coughs> so I'm like that's kind of weird kind of stupid <laughs> also the ending is really stupid because um, pretty much you got a girl and her brother in the movie, the brother gets killed uh, the Texas like Texan guy who's helping the brother take out the zombies or whatever in the movie, he gets killed as well so at the end of the movie all you got left is the girl who locks all the zombies up in one room and they eat each other so pretty much they, she's killed the zombies. They go back inside the TV. But uh, then you got her at the end. It just jumps and she's in a mental institution. There ain't no friggin' way I'd let anybody put me in a mental institution after this incident. Um, but she's in the mental institution. And then they bring the friggin' TV in there, her parents do, to keep her company. So she'll have something to like watch. Because it came from home. I mean, that's the biggest problem with the ending. Because now the girl's going to get killed because the TV is in there with her. And at the same time, no, that's stupid because if she's in a mental institution, wouldn't she have told the story to her parents? And wouldn't they know about the TV being cursed and that being like something that drove her crazy? Wouldn't they have examined the TV or someone would have? Why would they just bring it in there? That'd be like if uh, 
in my family was like killed and raped by a poodle. And then uh, to get therapy, they they uh, brought the same poodle into the room with me. I mean, like what? <laughs> I mean, they're not they're not doing it to like have her face her fears or nothing in the movie. They're just bringing it in there for her to have something to watch. I'm like, didn't they not pay attention at all to the story? She obviously had to have told them. But whatever, I'd give Video Dad two and a half stars. It's a decent movie. The zombies look cool. You get some okay gore scenes. Like a zombie gets like a, a steam, I mean like a, an iron or something like that shoved into the top of its head. And uh, you get to see some, uh, you get not too many kills in the movie. and At least two of them I think happen off screen. But you get, uh, you get a neat scene, though, where a zombie's chasing after the, the brother in the movie with a chainsaw. I thought that was all right. And I like it that the boy says his favorite movie is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And the, like, the guy who plays the Texan guy, I didn't like him that much at first, but I warmed up to him later. I found him at least semi-entertaining, especially since he's the only one that's doing... Well, he's the one that's doing most of the action and whooping the zombies' asses. Uh, but all in all, it's just a decent movie. The characters aren't anything to write home about. They're not that interesting. And the acting by some of the characters is downright, I mean, by some of the actors is downright horrible. The acting is, especially by the girl that played, like, the character April, who, uh, like, the, the the brother in the movie had a crush on. She was hard. <laughs> but uh, the zombies look good, and at least you have that. And you get a few kill scenes. Not anything to write home about. But decent attack scenes for zombies. Like you get a zombie strangling somebody and it gets like an iron shoved into its head and shit like that. It's at least mildly entertaining. And the TV set idea of the zombies coming out of it is like at least an entertaining B-movie idea. But the problem with the movie is it takes itself too seriously to me. I would have liked it better if it would have played itself more goofy and more fun with its idea. But anyway, I, it's, a, it's a decent movie. Some of the acting in it is downright horrible from some of the other side characters as well, like the uh, two delivery guys who bring the TV to the house. They're pretty bad as well. But all in all, it's a decent movie. I would say check it out. If you like Terror Vision, I would say give this movie a go. It's on a double feature disc by Screen Factory with Terror Vision on Blu-ray that I really want to get. But um, if you like Terror Vision, I'd say watch this one too. But don't expect anything any good as Terror Vision because it's not. This movie, Video Dead, would be decent. Terror Vision is really good, in my opinion. But, uh, yep, that's three reviews in one video right there. Uh, I figured I would go all out for my 100th uh, video and tackle three films in one. <laughs> so, until then, guys, I'll see you again with another, hopefully, great film.